You are listening to the ADHD Support Talk radio podcast. ADHD Support Talk is sponsored by addclasses.com. Visit www.addclasses.com to sign up for free webinars today. Hello, and welcome back to ADHD Support Talk Radio. I'm your co-host, Lynn Idris, and as a productivity coach, I help professionals who struggle with procrastination, disorganization, and poor time management learn to tackle their to-do lists, take control of their calendars, so that they have more time, more energy, and more money for what matters most to them. As a woman with ADHD myself, I have been where so many of my clients are, and I've come out the other side, so to speak. And I've gone from living in a constant state of chaos and underperformance, like most of you know so well, to a life of much more success and fulfillment. And I know you can share the same success. You can learn more about me, what I do, and the programs and services I offer at www.coachingaddvantages.com, coachingadvantages.com. And when you sign up on my website or text the keyword HACK, H-A-C-K, to 444-999, I'll send you my seven foolproof productivity hacks to help you add hours of free time to your week by investing just a few smart minutes each day. So today I have with me Kevin Roberts, and I'm excited about this episode because I think it's going to be something different, and Kevin has a a unique perspective that he wants to share with us. So we're going to talk about all things related to ADHD gifts and ADHD traits, and Kevin has a book entitled Schindler's Gift, How One Man Harnessed ADHD to Change the World. So welcome, Kevin. We're excited to have you here. Well, I am very excited to be here, and thank you for having me on, Lynn. I'm, I'm excited to, to hear what you have to say, but first tell the listeners a little bit about you, what you do, how you came to write the book. You know, give us a little bit of background about yourself. Well, I'm an adult with ADHD. Found out I had ADHD when I was uh, 25 or so, and uh, before that I just thought I was weird. I still think I'm weird, but now I understand some of my uh, twists and turns and why certain aspects of my life uh, can turn chaotic, as you said in the introduction. Um, I've been working for over 20 years, helping uh, ADHD young people and young adults, uh, largely uh, related to school and career. Um, and um, one of the things that I've done over the years is I've, in my work is I've uh, used examples of successful ADHD people to help inspire and, and mentor some of my clients. And one of the people that I found uh, is a great, reliable source of inspiration is Oscar Schindler because this is a guy who um, failed in almost every business of his life, and he had a lot of the tr- he had a he had all the traits of ADHD, most of them, and yet during one brief period of his life, he succeeded momentously. And so I, in, in this book that you talked about, I, and in my professional work, um, I use these lessons to figure out how can we overcome the liabilities and discover and harness our gifts because I find that ADHD people often have tremendous gifts it's just a matter of harnessing, harnessing them like a powerful horse you have to harness in order to use for your purposes. Absolutely. I like, I like that metaphor. That's a good one. And I do, we talked about this a little bit before we started the recording. I do believe that very strongly. I think, and, and, and some of it is perspective and some of it is that over the years, most of us with ADHD get pretty well beaten up by the world, beaten up by life, beaten up by ourselves. And it's, it's hard for us to see the things that we call you, know, you and I are calling, are calling gifts. Some of the traits that they struggle with, even on the flip side, can really be looked at as gifts. So back to the, the Schindler piece. You know, tell me why you suspected Oscar Schindler had ADHD and how you sort of excavated that. Well, first of all, when I saw the movie the first time, um, the, there was a scene, and you know, Oscar Schindler had this harebrained scheme. A lot of ADHDers, we have harebrained schemes, get-rich-quick schemes that we don't bring to fruition. And he goes to the Jewish council, and uh, he has this idea that he's going to get Jewish investors to invest in his business. And you know, Ben Kingsley, playing Get Sex Stern, says, uh, you know, thinks this is preposterous, and says, Mr. Simmons, let me understand. They put up all the money. I do all the work. And I, I stopped the film, and there was something about that scene. It was so powerful that it caused me to pause, and I watched it 10, 12, 15 times. And it wasn't until maybe the next day that I thought, you know, I think that guy might have had ADHD. So I've been to Poland 10 times. I've been to the Czech Republic numerous times, visiting Schindler's factory, visiting the archives. Uh, I've read every possible book on Oscar Schindler. I've read the memoirs. 
of Emily Schindler. I'm in touch with Dr. Erica Rosenberg, who was Emily Schindler's biographer and her heir. And I'm telling you, Lynn, that it, I, I was afraid when I first started this that it was going to be a hard case to make. It's an easy case to make. He, <laughs> had, tr- he had trouble in school. He was a kinesthetic learner, hated school, got in trouble for talking, running his mouth. Um, he liked fixing things. He liked taking things apart. Um, he was a risk taker. He was impulsive. He raced motorcycles, almost got killed on that. He uh, raced cars. He was driven uh, to distraction. He had a race car brain with bicycle brakes. But a lot of these factors during World War II combined, and there was a strange alchemy that worked in Oscar Schindler's life, and a lot of his liability turned into strengths. Now, that's a very, you know, I know we don't have time to go into all of it, but suffice it to say, that alchemy that I talk about in the life of Oscar Schindler is something I've seen work in the lives of many of the ADHD people I've worked with, and I'm sure you've had the same experience. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and it's, you know, it's the, it's the right, sometimes it's the right set of circumstances that help to bring it out. Sometimes it's the right attitude. Sometimes it's the right perspective. But it always has to be, you know, the right work, right? We have to do the right work in the right environment with the right mindset to be able to get ourselves there. But it's doable. And I, I love that, like, you know, the, 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 the set of traits, definitely the sort of dichotomy that there is with our traits. I, I talk a lot, of, a lot with my clients as well about, you know, successful people with ADHD and why they're successful and, and helping people with ADHD that, that are really struggling see you know, whether it's adults with ADHD, parents of kids with ADHD, see that there is a light, there is something to move toward, there is possibility. Because everything we struggle with, each one of those pretty typical ADHD characteristics has an upside. And if you can learn to harness the upside, and especially learn to harness your strengths to sort of minimize and manage your challenges, really, the potential is limitless. Well, and, you know, using the Oscar Schindler, you know, example, which I could insert the name of a number of people I've worked with, um, what did he have what were, when you, you talk about the, the circumstances? Well, he had, he didn't have a job anymore because he performed poorly at jobs because he would get bored and he didn't follow right. through on details. But during World War II, he had a mission. And so one of the right. things that I try to work with my clients is, like, what's your mission? What, you know, let's not get you a job. Let's get you something where you're doing what you were meant to do. Um, he had intensity. You know, now, not everybody is like me or Oscar Schindler or like my brother Dan, where we need intensity. But a lot of us with ADHD are. And, you know, the problem with those of us like Oscar Schindler who thrive in intensity, if we don't get uh, ways that are positive to meet our need for intensity, we'll often create negative intensity, but he had positive intensity that was fueled by a purpose. And Oscar Schindler also had something that you do every day in your professional work. He had support. He had some of the greatest businessmen. I call them his ADHD coaches, Jewish businessmen in Krakow. They were his coaches. They saw his potential, and they supported him every single day. So those three unique factors allowed an inner genius that had theretofore been untapped to emerge. And I think that's a process that, that a lot of people can experience if they will get support to find the right circumstances, to find their mission, um, and to find the intensity that draws them to make meaningful changes in the world. I love that. Mission, intensity, and support. And those are, those are the, per- that's the perfect set of circumstances to bring out somebody's strengths, to bring out somebody's, somebody's gifts, to really to, to let them shine. I, I think we've all been in a position at some point in our lives where – I mean, I actually had it literally in the same job, in the same office from, like, one minute to the next, where I worked with a boss who, who got me, allowed me to do things my sort of quirky ADD way, as long as I got the job done, at, you know, at, at the end of the day, so to speak. And then he left, and someone else came in who was much more rigid, much less understanding, much less accepting, and much less supportive. And it's amazing how much your ability to thrive can can really be dependent on those circumstances. And some well, of that you, you can think, change, right? Right. And if you're the parent of an ADHD child, you, you've, had, you've all had this, we've all had this experience as parents of ADHD children where our child it doesn't do well in school, doesn't do well in school, and then maybe in fifth grade we had Mrs. Johnson, and Mrs. Johnson got us. And That's then right. all of a sudden, the academic failure and the underperformance turned into uh, skyrocketed in the other direction. 
And so, Absolutely. you know, if we're so, you know, we, we, God, we all need, we all seem to need those people who get us, and the world is often absent those people. So it's, you know, that, it's, so it's not only supportive women, it's getting the right people in our lives. It is. And not everybody is, is actually a good source of support. It's, that's right. That's true, right? I mean, and you, you hit the nail on the head. I think it's true for every adult. I think it's true for every child. When somebody gets us, when somebody appreciates us, when somebody sees our potential and is willing to not, not just ignore, but accept our quirkiness and our odd ways of, of doing things as part of, you know, the wonderfulness that is us, it's amazing what we can do. I mean, we will bust our humps for that person. We will, That's right. and I, you know, yep. I saw it with my son growing up over the years. My son's now 23 he's in college. He's been really fortunate in college to have some professors that really he can really identify with and that really get him. And it's amazing how hard he works for those professors compared to the ones that are more, you know, rigid or the ones I would call like sort of my way or the highway <laughs> sort of yeah. people. It, it's, it's amazing. So getting the right kind of support, getting, surrounding yourself with, with people who appreciate you, you know, good, good side, downside, you know, all of the above. Well, you know, so, I do a lot of, I do a fair amount of public speaking. And um, I have this friend, one of my best friends, her name is Andrea Bilbo, and she's the president of ADHD Europe, and she lives in London, and she organizes a lot of conferences. And frequently, parents at these conferences will bring their children, especially this happens a lot in the United Kingdom when I'm over there. And, you know, it's the darndest thing, Lynn, but I will meet some of the, you know, let's say there's 100 adults, maybe there's three young people in the audience, and I will meet these children, and very often I will just have a two or three minute conversation and in that short time I will what you say I will get these kids and you know for me it's just like I'm just having being my normal Kevin Roberts ADHD self and having fun with these kids but so frequently I get these emails from their parents saying oh that was a wonderful he's never met anybody you know like you and he, it's changed his whole perspective in ADHD and you know what the truth is I didn't really do anything. I just <laughs> simply legitimate. Right. I didn't try to do that. I just legitimately enjoyed the kid. And because they, there are, for many of us, there are so few experiences of finding somebody who enjoys us, that short interaction can be transformative. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, not, and, not, and that, that piece, but also for, for that parent and that, young person to be able to see you, you know, ADHD in all its glory, being successful, creating a life for yourself where you have a mission, where you have fulfillment, where you have success, where you have, you know, the kind of accomplishments that's important to you. That is huge, right? As a, as a parent of a, of a young person with ADHD, I mean, it's, it's scary when you're struggling. And I remember it myself, you know, when I, when I was younger, like how am I going to navigate this world if I can't get my crap together enough to hand in a health report on time? <laughs> you know? right. like, whatever it is, I mean, it really is. It can be. It I, can feel, be I feel and I have felt your pain. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Let me tell you. Another conversation about, you know, <laughs> health reports. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Well, for me, it's, it's so taxes. Important. It's it's oh, it's yeah. the it's it's getting my taxes done, oh, and yeah. I don't absolutely. I don't take medication on a daily basis. But when it's time for me to do my taxes, I have to. There's just no <laughs> there's no other way. That's that, exactly what I tell my clients. I don't I don't need to take medication on a daily basis. I've kind of designed my life so that I, you know I have sufficient structure that you know it's sort of the perfect sweet spot for me. I have sort of set my life up with rhythm and routine and I don't, but any time when taxes, big projects that are, are looming, you know, I'm taking my meds. <laughs> yep. I 100% agree. <laughs> Absolutely. Or, or large unfilled spans of time. That would be another time I would take my medication. <laughs> well, so sometimes I do, sometimes I do too, because you know, a lot of what I do is tied to the school year uh, yeah. in terms of professionally. And so in the mm -hmm. summer, I have a lot more unstructured and free time. And, of course, you know, at the beginning of the summer, my mind is filled with, I am going to get so much writing done. Okay. It's, I, yeah, it's going to be wonderful. <laughs> and then, of course, there's no structure. So, you know, uh, re 1970s television reruns, here I come. Right. <laughs> you know, exactly. and I can lose track of time. So sometimes to get out of that funk, 
I will uh, take medication. And sometimes I just need to take it for a few days and then right. feel that oomph again. And, you know, and then I go back to it. And I, you know, I'm one of those people that, you know, I'm a writer, and I am not as creative when I'm on meds. There, it's, you know, so I know some people who are. I know some people who are writers and, and have great imagination and have creative products that they do, and they, they're even more productive on their meds. I am productive on my meds, but the creativity is not there as much. So I have to be careful. Huh. So it's a balance. That's interesting. I don't, I don't find that. I, I do know. It's like so many other things, ADHD, right? It's so personal. It's so individual. I, like you said, I have clients who, one client in particular who is a writer who hands down does way better when he's on his meds. But I have had clients in the past as well who will struggle more on the meds to actually produce anything creative than they and they will off. I think some of that person, some of it's probably the meds. I don't know, but that's that's interesting. It, it is, well, what it's I an do, important tool things, for a lot of us, right? One of the things, yes, and one of the things that I will do on a, when I'm on a med is I will um, structure. I'll write the structure for you know, like in, in last summer. I, I structured a book that I'm working on called Skateboarder's Guide to School, which is going to be how to help, you know, people who learn in motion. And I structured right. the whole thing, you know, in a couple of days when, you know, when I was medicated. And, but I didn't have a lot of the creativity come up until I went off the meds. I, it's, a, it's a crazy thing. I wish I had both. I wish I had both at the same time, but it just doesn't happen for me. So, yeah, but it's, it, 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 what, what works for one may not work for another. Exactly. Um, exactly. You know, you figured out how to make it work for you. And that's yeah. really, I think, sort of that's the underlying thread of all of this, right? It's, it's tapping into your gifts. It's, it's, it's using what you learn about yourself. And the, the ADHD gift or curse conversation, I mean, it's, it's, it's debated. It's, people have very strong opinions one way or the other. I mean, I've seen some of these, you know, some ADHD forums online or groups online where people get themselves, you know, pretty well lathered into a tizzy over the conversation, the, the gift or curse, and, and think that well, it's I'm right. to call it a gift or any of that. But go ahead. What were you going to say? I'm about? in the middle, and, you know, yep. um, I'm, I'm friends with Gina Para, and mm -hmm. um, Gina does not, she does not like the whole gift idea, and I think where yep. she's coming from is that, you know, if we call it a gift, then, then adults with ADHD who haven't really tackled the condition – you know, they're going to use that as an excuse to, to not have to work on themselves. And I understand right. that. I understand that. And that's why I think it's important to have a balanced condition, um, but, you know, a balanced position. But I want to, you know, I want to go back to something you said. One of the problems that, that, that I run into and that most ADHDers run into is we do have these flashes of brilliance. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Oscar Schindler had a flash of brilliance in which – he saved 1,200 Jewish people from the fires of the Holocaust, but then he went into a life of failure again because he didn't learn the lessons and he wasn't able to repeat those lessons and recreate those conditions. And that's, I think, what we have to do. You know, we have to all, just like you, you had a boss, you had the right conditions, and then you got a different boss, and then boom, you know, you, you went back to struggling greatly. And, you know, how do we... How do we come out of that? How do we re and, and that, you know, we have to have a lifelong engagement, you know, with who we are and what the gifts Absolutely. of this condition are and what the liabilities of this condition are. And by the way, I saw I solved that problem that you had by not working for all your people. <laughs> yeah, you and me both, right? <laughs> yeah, and you know Absolutely. And, and you know, not everybody can do not everybody can do that. Right. You know, Absolutely. I love it. I can't I can't sit back and tell every ADHD, you just got to be self-employed, you know, because a lot of us fail miserably without Absolutely. any structure. So. External structure, external accountability, all of that. It can be, it's, it can be, depending on the person and depending on sort of where they are in their ability to manage their challenges and, and the things that they struggle with, it can be a wonderful thing. I mean, statistics show that people with ADHD are something like 300% more likely to own their own business. So we are the entrepreneurs of the world. We are the out-of-the-box thinkers, the creators. But at the same time, that lack of structure, that lack of external accountability is really tough, especially in the beginning when you're trying to figure out how to set it up for yourself. And I, you know, what I took from that lesson, I think maybe when I, if I were younger, and we're going back, goodness, probably 25 years or more, when I had that sort of experience in my, in my workplace, 
was that I'm doing the same job. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm the same me. I'm doing exactly what I was doing last week, and all of a sudden, like, it's not acceptable. Not only is it, like, is it not to that person's standards, but it, it was beyond acceptable. It was exceptional to one person, and now all of a sudden it's not to someone else, and I haven't changed. So it, I was able to see it sort of objectively, but I am 100% sure that at a different part of, part in, of my life, a different point in my life, I would have internalized that, and I would have made that about me, about my my challenges and, and the things that, that I am not strong at. But I was, in a, I was in a good place in terms of, you know, self-awareness, in terms of self-esteem and, and all of that. And that's a hard thing to do when you've been, you know, sort of beat up most of your life by yourself and by other people. Yeah, because we, we tend to buy into the negative narrative that people, Absolutely. people, people create. When I was Absolutely. 25, and I only taught school for four years, but I taught school, and we had a new principal, and he did not like my style. And, you know, whereas I was a very, very, very popular teacher at this school, it was mm-hmm. a school for gifted children. And um, he kind of came at me and he, would, he was constantly giving me advice. And, you know, I was, I was anxious and I, you know, and I had all these emotional reactions to it because I just didn't understand it. And then I talked to this mentor friend of mine, his name is John Everingham. And John Everingham wrote a book about shame and he, well, he's been a mentor of mine in writing and all sorts of stuff. And he told me, he says, it sounds like this guy's a control freak and that you need some emotional space. So whenever you see him or whenever he comes up to you, I want you to repeat this mantra in your head. This guy's a control freak. This guy's a control freak. This guy's a control freak. And I did that. He said, let him talk, let him say everything, and just repeat this guy's a control freak. And after I started doing this, I stopped getting emotionally attached to whatever he was saying. And I would say, oh, well, I can see that you really thought about this. And you're trying to give me advice about sound teaching methods. Thank you very much. You know? And then I, then I was able to let it go. But that, that was a great learning experience for me that, you know, as you said, learning to not make it about yourself. And, and that's yeah. something that I started, a process I started you know, when I taught school, but I'm continuing to learn that. I'm continuing to have to do that in my life. Absolutely. It never stops, right? It, it never stops. No. It, and, and actually, I don't believe it can stop if we're really going to be successful. I no. Think it does, I think the self-awareness, I think right. the self-learning, that has to be a lifelong process. Absolutely. It doesn't mean it's as hard now as it was in the beginning, <laughs> but it definitely, it definitely can't stop. Absolutely. Well, the most, in, the most enduring side quote unquote side effect of an ADHD diagnosis is the damage to self esteem. Yeah. And and that is something that exists apart from, you know, any uh brain issue, you know, atypical brain functioning and issues and so forth. That's something that exists apart and that's the biggest problem. And you know, once that once that self esteem gets damaged, it is very difficult to repair and you know, I, there are still you know times when I have what I call a low self-esteem, you know, moment, I'm a loser, yeah. I'm an imposter, you know, I feel right. bad about myself. I, you know, it's a regular thing that I still have to deal with. And, you know, it's only through a uh, long uh, honed process of positive self-talk that I get through those moments because I could easily Absolutely. fall, you know, into a pit of negativity. It's really, real easy for uh, me to do that. I, I think it's, I think that's true for most of us with ADHD. It's really easy to go back to the, Oh, here we go again. You know, you're a whatever. Everybody's, I always call them tapes. Everybody's tapes, everybody's words, everybody's sort of message, you know, could be a little bit different, but I'll go into that whole, you know, you know, here we go again, same shit, different day, you know, or different year right. or whatever it is. Right. You think you have it together, but see, you know, you're a mess after all or whatever. All that old stuff sort of creeps back in, but you're right. You've got to, you've got to recognize it for what it is. You've got to work really hard to counter it. You've got to, you know, fight back against it and really make sure you keep, you keep a more realistic and a more positive perspective about yourself. We're all human. I'm, I, you know, my ADD shows up. You know, we were talking about it before we started the recording. It's been a couple of weeks of, of a combination of, like, technological challenges and, and other things that have just been sort of an ADD nightmare for me, just, you know, sort of off my game. So I've screwed a few things up. I've made some mistakes I, I haven't made for a long time. And, you know, I've got to forgive myself and let go and move forward. And personally, I have to laugh about it or I, I will make myself insane. So it's... It is so much of it is about your your perspective and your your perception of yourself. Absolutely. 
Well, you know, yeah. even though I don't, I didn't necessarily agree with his politics. I think Ronald Reagan had a great method for doing this, and he because he would mangle words and you know sometimes get things wrong, and he would say right on public, "Well, there I go again," and <laughs> that would completely diffuse the situation. Nothing stuck to him because he was willing in the moment to admit when he made a mistake. And right. oh, well, there I go again, and so that I do that to myself, you know, because I'm a I'm a comedian. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I've done a lot of stand-up comedy and stuff. And so if I make something in humor, then it really helps me diffuse any negativity. So, to, you know, to myself and even sometimes aloud, I go, well, there I go again. And that kind of helps <laughs> me. That's a little trick I use to help me diffuse the negativity. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. I have to borrow that every once in a while. Well, please, please do. I mean, if it's good enough for the leader of the free world, it's good enough. There you go. Absolutely. Uh, whatever works. Awesome. Well, this has been a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed having you here today, Kevin. Any last thoughts you want to leave with our listeners? Yeah, if, you know, if you're an ADHD person and, you know, you're wondering about are you going to succeed, are you going to um, make a difference in this world, I, I think you can. And uh, if, if you get the right support, if you find what your sense of purpose is and you find ways to love yourself and to talk lovingly and positively to yourself, you can do it. And I think that's the message of my book, Schindler's Gift, and that's the message of my professional work. So that's what I want to leave them with. I love that. I really love that. Well, tell our listeners again how they can find you, how they can, they can get in touch with you if you would. Um, you can go to my website, and it's Kevin J. Don't forget the J. KevinJRoberts.net. KevinJRoberts.net, not .com, .net. And you can email me directly at kevin at kevinjroberts.net. Thank you so much. It's been a blast having you here. I I know our listeners have have gotten some great information from our chat today, and I hope we can have you again soon. I'd love to be on again. It's been a pleasure. It has. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks for listening, everyone.